Well, thank you everyone for joining us this Wednesday evening. I'm Stephen Chernisky, a nutritional biochemist. I taught clinical nutrition at two California universities, and I directed the nation's first FDA-licensed clinical lab for nutrition and immunology. Um, I've been around the block a few times in this industry. I was the chief science officer for four direct sale companies um, and helped uh, in terms of the uh, accomplishment in terms of publications and patents. Um, we, uh, at one time, one of the companies, Univera, uh, racked up about 150 publications and 78 patents. So, um, like I said, I've been around. My wife, Natalie Kaether, is a double board certified physician. Yep, I'm a medical doctor boarded in family medicine and anti-aging medicine with a metabolic medicine focus. And my husband and I are quite delighted that we became uh, Zenzino's scientific advisory board members a few months ago. And we're excited about being part of this family and about the measurable wellness, the test-based nutrition that Zenzino takes with their products. Hmm. So tonight we're going to be talking about uh, another aspect of the uh, omega-3 and omega-6 story. Uh, as all of you know who, who are on this call uh, and are regulars on this call, you know that what we're talking about here is a ratio of omega-6 to omega-3 fatty acids in cell membranes. Why is that important? because this determines the function of cell membranes, which determines the function of the cell, which determines the function of the tissue, which determines the function of the gland and the organ and everything else in your brain and your, <laughs> your nervous system and your immune system. All of it is based on the function of what? The cell. So when we look at the cell, we're primarily looking at fats. Why? Because the membrane is made out of fatty acids. Now, the composition of that plays a very important role in your health. And that's probably, if you're new on this call, that's probably news to you because your doctor didn't talk about this, <laughs> right? This is something which is critically important that has been overlooked. And that's why Zenzino is a company that is really pioneering in this arena of looking at the composition of your fatty acids and looking at specifically this simple test. This is a dried blood spot test that you do at home. And this will give you the results of 11 essential fatty acids. And the big picture of that is the balance between your omega-6 to your omega-3 fatty acids. And the safe zone, the health zone that we want is a goal of three to one. Or better. Or better. Mm -hmm. But for many Americans, we're 22 to one. Or 40 to one. Yes. Or 90 to one. Yes. <laughs> Um, and so then we want to take action. So what do we do next? Ah. Well, the great thing is that the 22 page report that comes with this, um, not only tells you about dietary changes that you can make, and we'll talk a little bit more about that today, but they're, um, cutting edge industry disrupting balance oil. And this isn't fishy oil. This is more like fatty fish. Actually, it's more like the Mediterranean diet because this is omega-3 fatty acids, omega-7, omega-6, omega-9, olive oil, combined with a special group of polyphenols, which helps prevent oxidation and optimize the effect of these oils entering not only through our gut, but then into our cell membranes and into our mitochondria membranes, <laughs> um, making energy easier, um, making our cells work better, good nutrients in, get the waste out. Fabulous. So with that understanding, then we have to see, hmm, so besides uh, taking the test, so seeing where I am in terms of this ratio of omega-6 to omega-3, right? How important is that? Well, when your omega-6 level is too high, you have an inflammatory state. And inflammation is the most damaging force in human physiology. So at the same time, what you want to do is you want to get that back to at least a 3 to 1, not a 20 to 1, not a 60 to 1, but about a 3 to 1 or better. Now, how do you do that? You take the test, you find out how you're doing, where am I? And then you use the oil to get into the safe zone. Now, that being the case... There's a wonderful doctor who has joined us recently, Joe Hiblin. Uh, 
Uh, and he has been telling us, hey, I'm really happy that you're taking your own, your your balance oil. This is the best thing you could possibly take to get yourself into the safe zone. But at the same time, he warns, if you're just eating the standard American diet of highly processed foods that are loaded with omega-6 fats, you're fighting an uphill battle. And what we want to do tonight is, number one, say, this is not that we want everybody to become paranoid, right? We've seen people, like, you've seen people in the supermarkets, like reading every every single label and getting worried and upset. No, this is not about getting worried and upset. This is about being informed. Um, and so we're going to go through a couple of things that are in our pantry and, <laughs> and tell you what we think about those various oils that are part of any processed food. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to start with um, something that's in probably everybody's refrigerator, which is salad dressing. And salad dressing, the first ingredient is always oil. Now, in our house, olive oil is the most common salad dressing we use. But at the same time, we know that people like creamy dressings. They like cheesy dressings. We like to have people over for dinner. So we do stock a fair amount of these uh, salad dressings in our in our cupboard. But And you'll see most of them are either canola oil. Um, some of them are safflower. Some of them are sunflower oil. So let's talk about those very common oils. You're going to see a lot of canola oil in our pantry not only with these uh, salad dressings like this one, but something that I am kind of addicted to, <laughs> which is bitchin' sauce. And I know I'm probably talking to other people who really enjoy this, and if you haven't tasted it, you really should. And the second ingredient, right, the second ingredient after water is <laughs> sunflower oil. Now, sunflower oil is pretty high, in uh, omega sixes, um, it's about a seventy-seven to one ratio. So they, this is not something you want to be eating by the tablespoon, but a little bit goes a long way, and that's what I want to emphasize here. A little bit goes a long way. At the same time, do so be mindful about portion size. Yes. Okay. At the same time, you got a lot of these, right? A lot of the tomato sauces, a lot of the ketchups. Um, and I want to say that for the most part, when you're looking at red sauces, whether it's ketchup or whether it's jalapeno sauce, you're going to be okay. Why? Because this is mostly tomato paste and water, right? With some flavorings or some jalapeno something. So tomato products are usually pretty darn good in terms of the omega-3 to 6 ratio. Not to worry about those. Then you've got lots of other things. Now, pesto, one of my favorite foods. Ah, God, I love a good pesto. My favorite was, was <laughs> Trader Joe's until I read the ingredient. And what do you know? It's not made with olive oil like pesto has been made for hundreds of years. Trader Joe's pesto is made with canola oil. Now, come on, Trader Joe's. And if you look at Trader Joe's other things, you find canola oil a lot. Now, let's clear the air about canola oil. Because if you were to ask your doctor about canola oil, your doctor would say, oh, it's perfectly fine. It's got a ratio of omega-6 to omega-3, about 3 to 1. Isn't that great? Well, not really. Here's why it's not really great. The only omega-3 fat in canola oil is alpha-linolenic acid, or ALA. To really get the omega-3 fatty acids that we want, which is EPA and DHA, your liver has to go through a pretty complicated conversion to make what we really want, which is EPA and DHA. So canola oil is not a great source of the omega-3s that you want. This is a great source of the omega-3s that you want, all right? So at the same time, is it going to be terrible for you? Is it toxic, like some people say? And the answer is no. Canola oil is not toxic, no matter what you hear on some websites. At the same time, because it's in everything. And why is it in everything? Because it's dirt cheap. <laughs> you buy it by the 55-gallon drum. It's very inexpensive, which is why Trader Joe's uses it in most every single one of their sauces and creams and spreads. 
So we want to reassure people that the balance oil is an excellent choice Thank you. because it contains the high amount of olive polyphenols combined with omega-3, omega-6, omega-7, omega-9, which is exactly what you need to get your omega-6 to 3 ratio where it should be. And I see you have some more foods here, um, but I do want to talk with Doug tonight, ah. who has done his second balance test. And I'm not, please don't do that. <laughs> oh, it's my drum, my um, drum roll. <laughs> It would be good to talk with Doug tonight, who's done his second balance test. And we can ask him, too, about what dietary changes he made in addition to adding the balance oil. So, uh, Doug, if you could please unmute yourself, we would love to hear your story of your balance tests and your omega-3, uh, excuse me, and your uh, balance oil use and your diet. Well, thank you both for having me on tonight, but also for leading this journey across the field. Now, I was going to start off and say my sweetheart, Debbie, actually predicted that my test results would be about 20 to 1. Now, that's before I tell you that this would be my second test. My first test was actually 51 to 1. Yikes. The reason I didn't share this with you earlier because I wanted to see your expression. I thought I would see it as well. My test results today, 2.9 to 1. <laughs> oh, my gosh. How wonderful. From danger zone awesome. to safe zone. From danger zone to safe zone. Now. Yeah, it's, it is amazing. But I And I took it almost every single day. I mean, there was a day here or there that I did miss it, taking it. Uh, just a couple things. I added... I did research. Walnuts seem to be the best source of nuts for omega-3. So I tried implementing those. And then I started, you know, you become more and more conscious. You're shopping. You're looking at everything. Now, I used to consume a lot of regular, say, butter for baked potatoes. But I saw a different butter. I can't believe it's not butter. And it said light. And it actually says it was high in omega-3. So I implemented that. And I believe omega-3 seeds is what else where I'd sprinkle it in my uh, oatmeal or whatever. But those are mainly the, th oh, and of course, the balance oil plus. So those are basically the four things I implemented in. And, you know, of course, my hair is growing quicker. It's just not, it's more like Steve's getting that color versus Natalie's. But, hey, it's growing. Hey. Now, when you say the balance oil plus, um, did you get the regular balance oil plus or did you get the premium? No, just the, the regular premium. balance oil plus. Wow. Amazing and wonderful. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> wow. What a, what a, what a success story, Doug. Thanks so much for sharing. <laughs> so baby, as you pull out your condiments here, there's, there's hope for us. <laughs> yes. There's hope for us. Let's talk about, um, uh, Mayonnaise made with avocado oil. Let's talk about avocado oil. That's one of my faves uh, in terms of the fatty acid balance because you've got, you got some good omega-3s and lots of omega-9s. And avocado oil also has lots of polyphenols. So I'm a big fan of avocado oil. The thing that you'll find when you buy products made with avocado oil is that it separates. You got to shake it, shake it, shake it. But other than that mild inconvenience, avocado oil is a really good choice. Most of the vegan dips, and we're a big fan of this particular one, also from Trader Joe's. Most of the vegan dips, the uh, dip. yeah, they're going to be primarily... Um, Read the first, uh, the second ingredient, I believe, honey. Dairy-free, let's see, a dairy-free cheese alternative, and then modified food starch. No, before the modified food starch, there's an oil. Coconut oil. Coconut oil. That's what. So coconut oil, you're going to find a lot of uh, vegan spreads and dressings uh, use coconut oil. Why? It's coconut oil gives you that wonderful, creamy, spreadable consistency because coconut oil at room temperature is a solid. Saturated fats. Yes. And that did, means that it's got a lot of saturated fat in it. So the, you do want to be moderate 
um, with coconut oil. A lot of people say, oh, you don't have to worry about coconut oil. You can eat it by the tub and it's perfectly fine. It's a lot Not of true. It's a, number one, it's a lot of calories. There's a lot of saturated fat in there. Um, and, and sometimes people say, oh yeah, but you're getting all those MCTs, medium chain triglycerides. Now it's true that coconut oil is a source of medium chain triglycerides. And it's true that MCTs are easy energy for your body. But don't think you're going to get a lot of MCTs from your tzatziki sauce. What you want to get with MCTs, if you're so inclined, is the is the material called MCT oil, which is derived from coconuts. So that, if you're like an uber athlete like Catherine, I'm sure she is a user of MCTs before she goes into one of her mega workouts. Uh, because it's easy, fast energy, and that's all good and true. But don't think you're getting a lot of MCTs from unrefined coconut oil. What else do we have? We have, um, hmm, yeah, more coconut oil here. The the only thing I want to say about that, another vegan spread, is you're going to find the ingredient coconut oil again because it's it's spreadable, all right? So it's very, you'll find a lot of this. Coconut oil is very rich in lauric acid and palmitic acid. And these are two saturated fats. Your body can handle that, that amount of saturated fats as long as you're not eating this by the tub. And again, your lauric acid and palmitic acid, you've got basically 12 carbon uh, fatty acids. And that means what? That your liver has to work to, to elongate that into a fatty acid that your body can actually use. Okay which is why saturated fats generally tend to add to your atherosclerotic risk. Thank you for that. Well, what else would you like to talk about? Oh, well, I, I know what you want to talk about because I brought out the Trader Joe's extra virgin olive oil and Natalie said, well, yes, Stephen, but don't we have any of this? The Revo, the revolutionary... Um, extra virgin olive oil from oh. Zenzino. And so we were very fortunate to get on the subscription um, before they ran out of stock. Um, and what's unique about this olive oil is that it's up to 30 times higher in polyphenols uh, compared to ordinary olive oil. And it has a full spectrum of bioactive compounds locked into the omega-9 oil. Um, so it's, it, it truly is revolutionary. And it has a a incredibly rich taste. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're we've we've uh, we've got our shopping list. Uh, I mean, our Christmas list. <laughs> All of our friends are getting. We we hope we wanted to come back and stop. <laughs> yes. 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 And then um, I'd like to talk a little bit about a list that Stuart Tomp recently shared. Um, and this is a list that he got from the Department of Agriculture. And this list gives a ranking to different foods, kind of like Stephen pulling out uh, different condiments here. And these different rankings are regarding um, the benefit of the omega-3 versus the six balance score. And so things that are very poor on this list, Yikes. Um, safflower and grapeseed oil were in the awful effect. Um, it's better to be bad than to be awful. And I found it interesting that when I typed in soy into this list, um, yeah, it showed up 37 times and most of it is in the awful zone. But then I, go ahead. Now, what did, what did Joe Hiblin say about soy oil? I mean, aside from the fact that the ratio of omega-6 to 3 is about 60 to 1, um, he did say that the amount of soy oil that we're consuming uh, has what increased a thousandfold um, yeah. in 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 a few generations. So again, if you're an evolutionary biologist, which I tend to be, you tend to look at how we have evolved in terms of our diet and how that has affected our physiology. And we've always said that if you look at the hunting and gathering diet, the ratio of omega-6 to 3 is about 1 to 1. 
right? And so as we then developed other seed oils, right, the seed oils were developed first, and then we learned how to hydrogenate them, which made them even worse. And then we learned how to highly process them into a point where they are unusable by the human body. And that is where we're at today with people so out of balance and so hyper inflamed. And I, I want to remind everybody that when we talk about inflammation that results from a high omega-6 to omega-3 ratio, this is silent. This ultimately is not silent. Ultimately, it will affect your joints and your tendons and your ligaments and your bones and your muscles, and it will not be silent anymore. But in the beginning, you don't feel it. And so it is silent. And your doctor, listen to me, is not looking for this. Your doctor is not testing for this. Why is your doctor not testing for this? Because there's no drug to fix it. <laughs> there's a natural product that fixes this. And they hate that. Doctors are trained to distrust and denigrate natural products, to only trust pharmaceuticals, except for this wonderful doctor here, <laughs> who is an integrated medicine doctor who looks for natural products first and uses drugs when necessary. But the conventional doctors are trained to not trust any natural product, to always look for the pharmaceutical fix. And since there's no pharma fix, for the omega-6 to omega-3 imbalance, they don't even look for it. End of editorial. <laughs> <laughs> so the next thing I did with this list is I thought about um, babies. And uh, we love that the balance oil has um, 700 milligrams of DHA, docosahexaenoic acid, which is important for healthy brain and healthy eye function. And so... When I went to this list, I thought about, well, hey, what is in, what do we, what do we think about infant formulas? Mm. So type in infant formula. And now, there's... Now remember, infants have a very limited ability to, to convert alpha linolenic acid to EPA and DHA. Um, their little livers are really bad at that. So it's really important that we look for ways to improve EPA and DHA directly. Thank you for that. So um, all 77 were in the bad effect zone that wow. we listed on here. Even Abbott Nutrition. Even Abbott Nutrition, yep. Mm. And so I thought a little bit more about these little folk. Um, back in 2007, I had a woman who was working with a baby that um, had been born to a mama who had been taking methamphetamine mm -hmm. during the pregnancy. And so she was fostering this little guy while the mom was trying to get her life figured out. And I said, well, we have to have a formula for this guy that has DHA in it. Mm -hmm. And we couldn't find any locally here in Olympia, Washington in 2007. Wow. Um, but things have changed, thank goodness, in a good way. And um, it's it's being added to, um, here we go, to formulas. But here in the U.S., um, our amounts are not as good as Europe for uh -huh. DHA. And so the World Health Organization recommends that products have um, at least 0.32% set to mirror, mirror the worldwide breast milk average for DHA levels. Okay. And if you think that's a good level, I just want to remind everyone that, um, and make sure I can, I just want to remind everyone that it turns out that 95% of the globe right. is out of balance. Right. So um, if the World Health Organization would really step back, please, and rethink that, because for health, our babies need something more. Yeah. And um, I like that Zenzino advocates. They have maternity programs in other countries. They don't have one so much in the United States, but they have a maternity packs. And so when it comes to um, 
thinking about formula for our babies. And I'm sure all of us know at least one baby in our life mm. who has needed formula at some time. It's really important to look at the amount of DHA um, contents. We made sure that our kids, when they were getting ready to have um, our grandkids, we made sure that they were, that the mothers were supplementing uh, with, with uh, EPA and DHA. Um, because that's critically important for the growing fetus. It's critically important when the baby is born. It's critically important when the baby is nursing. So all of those ways to get these incredibly important fatty acids into that growing body um, makes a world of difference. So we advocate for women that that are thinking of becoming pregnant. We say to them, hey, you need to get started on prenatal vitamins at least a year before getting pregnant. We advocate these women get tested, get into balance. And I would love that they be in balance for at least a year <laughs> before getting pregnant so that we can have healthier and brighter babies. Oh, wonderful. All right. And I bet we have lots of questions on these topics that we talked about today. Right. Or comments. Um, does anyone have some thoughts that they'd like to share? I do. Please, Linda. Um. Yes, uh, my daughter, Deanna, she's going to be a, a step grandma and um, her step grand or her stepdaughter has sugar and she's not on the balance oil or anything. So this has been real interesting so that we can play this for her so we can have her take the test and get on the balance oil as soon as possible because she is a, she has diabetes one. Ah. So that's not good. Well, that will be critically important, um, obviously. And we're not making any claims for the treatment of, of type 1 diabetes. But right. it is important to know that, that when, you, when you lack the insulin that would be normally produced by the pancreas, uh, when you lack that, it makes it really difficult to get glucose from the bloodstream into the cell's that's why the blood sugar level remains high and and that's the physiology what we know uh, from the research that's been done with cell membranes is that when you optimize cell membrane structure right with how with, <laughs> with a, a a powerful product like this that blood sugar is is the gating mechanism that brings blood sugar into the cell is improved. So more than Thank you. And to get her on balance oil. Yes, definitely. Thank you for this. Thank you, Catherine. Can I, I just wanted to share, I had a great testimony today from a customer and um, she's a good friend of mine and we have been going to the gym together for a very long time. She just had so many issues, her knees, her feet, just everything. And she just went to Vienna to try to go see the Taylor Swift concert <laughs> with another Whoa. teacher. She's the teacher Whoa. and you know, all that. But she was saying they were there for 10 days and um, they walked everywhere, just did everything. And she just, she cannot believe how good she feels. She has said, I can't even believe it. My knees now, she's been in so many times they were thinking knee replacement. I mean, she has struggled so for so long, honestly. And she's like, my knees are fine. My feet are fine. I could walk. I mean, all over every day, all the time. She's a extremely active person, but always, always in pain, always trying to figure out her problem. And she said, what is happening? This is crazy. And she has tried everything. She's always like, well, whatever you're doing, I want to do it. And um, she absolutely loves all of it. And I've never had her say any, she said at first she would take the oil and wasn't you know, it was hard for her to take. And now she said, my body just craves it. And she brought the ascent with her. So she could take the pills while she was there. And um, she's going to come to our Tahoe event, Sunnyside, just to do a testimony. She just, want, she's so happy about it all. I said, you have to come and do a testimony for us because I mean, that's really what it's all about. She's just, I mean, I cannot be more happy for her and it makes you just feel so great when all these amazing things are happening for people, you know, it's a, it's incredible. 
Wonderful. Oh, thank you. Sad that she didn't get to see the concert. <laughs> I know. She was like, oh, my gosh. But we went to some site to go to see go. what Sound of Music was. Sound of Music site. We went there all day. It was great. So okay. great. Wonderful. Yeah. Wow. Uh, <laughs> anyone else this wonderful Wednesday evening? with? Yes, I guess one of the, uh, say, results that I'll be keeping a close eye on, I think I'm probably among the most important, was the cell membrane fluidity yes because i got mine again this is way up there 22.2 but i got it down to 6.4 and i see that the target is at least a 4.1 yeah so i'm at least heading in the right direction but i guess once i get that there that'll really help in moving everything else in and out and getting the cells to be more optimized is that am i right I'm yeah, they call that category cell fluidity, but they should name it properly cell rigidity. Um, so by having that higher number of omega-6s, it meant that your your membrane was more stiff like a plastic ball as opposed to nice and fluidy. So congratulations on going the right direction. Wow. Thank you. My sweetheart even says that, you know, even my hands are smoother or softer. Yes. Wow. Uh, everyone is noticing skin improvements rapidly. Um, and and I, I'm, I'm going to start asking people to take a you know, good close-up photo of their face uh, as well as their hands. Um, thank you for reminding me. It should not just be your face, it should be your hands uh, because that's where people are noticing the improvements the, the very, very quickly, literally in a couple of weeks. Thank you, Doug. All right. If we have uh, no other questions, we're going to... I have a question. Yes. How are you? Hi, Betsy. Hi. I'm really good. Well, <laughs> to, to be fair, I'm not. But um, tonight, I'm, I'm great grateful to be here. Um, and really grateful to have your specific response to my question. I would love for you to elaborate on how this particular type of transformation in nutrition um, and this product specifically relates to the inflammation. You said that inflammation is just out of control and I suffer tremendously from inflammation as do my daughters, both of them. So I would love to hear more about that. Okay. The, the, and it, it, it depends on how much you want to, um, get into the physiology uh, because inflammation has, has been a, a key focus of my research for, gosh, over 30 years. Um, and what I want to start with is the omega-6 to omega-3 ratio because as that becomes skewed, now are you going to do something here that you want me to stop talking? Nope, you go ahead and keep talking. Okay. If you look at the omega-6 to omega-3 ratio, that is, that's going to determine uh, a great deal of how much inflammation you have in your body. Um, and, and the reason for that is because as this ratio becomes, you know, way beyond three to one, five to one, 10 to one, 20, 30, 40, we've seen people who are at 90 to one. And so that is, that is an inflammatory state. That is a disease state in and of itself because inflammation is the most damaging force in human physiology. Um, if you look at the, how, how we describe aging and health, Natalie and I describe it as a ratio between repair functions in the body and the damage that we all experience on a daily basis. So when you're young, uh, your ratio looks like this. Repair capacity is phenomenal. And then as we get older, we tend to repair less and we tend to accumulate damage. And that damage is primarily inflammation. The second force, of course, is oxidative stress and then wear and tear and finally infection. But that pretty much covers all the damaging forces. So inflammation can be, can be controlled to a great extent at the cell level. What if you don't do that? If you don't do that, then what you have now is a cascade. 
you have a whole, the transformation or the conversion of molecules that end up producing inflammatory proteins, which are called cytokines. And that may be a term that's new to you, although we have heard a lot about cytokines during COVID because the infection produced a massive amount of inflammation. So the word cytokines, suddenly you heard it on the evening news. Well, these are inflammatory proteins that are produced by the conversion of all of these molecules into inflammatory proteins. I'm telling you all this because there are other ways to intervene. So one of the ways, the best way to intervene is at the cell level. But if you don't do that, and some of these inflammatory proteins continue to be produced, you can also intervene lower down in that, in that whole process. And that's one of the things that I worked on for 15 years with Univera, the lab that I was associated with. And what we looked at was, Hmm, are there ways to stop or to dial down inflammation way down here beyond the cell level of what's happening in the tissues themselves? Happening, what's happening in the joints, what's happening in the muscles and the tendons and ligaments. And we found that there was something that could be done. And that's what we worked on by dialing down the inflammatory proteins that are produced later on in this cascade. So that's something that can be done, and that or those are natural products as well. Um, and these are these are called well, they're primarily polyphenols, of course, as you could probably guess. So we found polyphenols that were specifically able to dial down inflammation. Now, at the same time, there are plenty of drugs that work at that level, but these drugs have an adverse side effect because they tend to not just dial down these genes that code for inflammatory proteins, they turn those genes off, which was the mistake that Merck made with Vioxx. At the same time, uh, uh, you have Celebrex, which is also effective at dialing, at, at turning off these genes, but again, with adverse effects over time. So when you use a drug to dial down the inflammation, at this level, the tissue level, you have to be mindful to make sure that you're not experiencing the toxic side effects in your GI tract, your liver, and your kidneys. And then, Betsy, I'd like to share with you, do a screen share here of a uh, research uh, scientific article. And this is, again, another, um, you know, edification of using the balance oil, the importance of maintaining a low omega-6, omega-3 ratio for reducing inflammation. And um, the Western diet, unfortunately, gives a ratio of 20 to 1. Um, they point out that up until about 100 years ago, that it had been 4 to 1. Uh, now, when we look at the data regarding um, health for cells, we know it's 3 to 1 or better. Um, I recently did my second balance test and I'm hoping I'm going to be two to one. Um, so there's a lot of value in testing because you want to know where you start. And then, of course, um, adding the balance oil and they have two types, the regular and then there's one that has even more polyphenols in it, which is the premium. And I had switched to the premium for me a couple months ago because I visit the gym almost every day. And so that kind of exercise level, there's more oxidation. And so it made sense for me to take care of my body in that way. Did that help answer your question? Yes, thank you so much. My confusion was the explanations that medical doctors were trying to throw out didn't make sense because the age gap between myself and my daughters, it wouldn't make sense. The, the repair and damage um, triangle that you have there, it makes sense for someone like myself, but my both of my daughters being under the age of 18 to be experiencing the same level of inflammation and even more debilitating pain, that description didn't make sense. And all of us are just getting more and more medications with each year. And so this is very exciting 
for me to hear and I'll, I'll want to know more. <laughs> yes. And they should test. Um, I had been taking regular fish oil pretty uh, consistently along with uh, the polyphenol blend that Stephen spoke of uh, that's different than what's in the balance oil. And that got me to 6.7 to one. Um, our, our uh, youngest son, Ivan, um, his was 30 to one and he's only 23. <laughs> so um, that mine was better than Ivan's yikes. Um, he needs to rethink his diet. And so uh, we can't make this assumption. Oh, young people, they're fine with their repair signals. They're fine with their inflammation. We need to test. Thank you for asking about that. Awesome. Hey, guys, this is Chad up here in Victoria. Hey, Good Chad. to see you guys again. And, uh, and super grateful to reconnect with you. And I'm super always grateful for the value and the self-education that I receive in your presence. And I'm really looking forward to getting started. Brent reached out to me, and I'm super grateful he did. And tonight we're going to get started. I'm excited for my test to come in the mail. And I, you know, it's always about that science-based nutrition with numbers and facts. And any time that you can do anything to be proactive is like the best thing ever you know, to lead by example for those around us. And it's just everyone needs help. They don't, don't know it. I always say like the air quality and the water quality and the food quality is not the same as it used to be. And so everyone is going to be susceptible. So I'm grateful. Thanks for letting me share. Hey, glad to see your smiling face. It's been a while. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Wonderful. All right. Any other thoughts or questions? I'm excited that we're going to be in Reno mm -hmm. and Tahoe yes. City and Sparks, uh, Nevada, the weekend of August 24th to the 26th. And so if you have friends, family um, in that area, um, business colleagues, uh, please let them know about those events. I'm going to put in the chat um, my information here. Oh, oh, we have some other good thoughts here. But I'm going to put my information so that people can let me or, or can reach me if they'd like the flyers. Yeah, please do uh, call anyone and everyone in a in a commuting distance to um, Lake Tahoe or Reno. We'd love to see old friends. We love to see new friends. Um, and so we're looking forward to getting there on the 24th um, and having some fun um, in three different events that are planned so far. Um, and we'll add more uh, if people uh, show up and need meetings. So again, uh, we're planning on having a lot of fun um, and and testing a lot of people. <laughs> a lot You'll of have to stop by the hot August nights and see all the hot cars. Oh yeah, that's that's one of my favorite <laughs> events there in Reno for sure. For sure, huge at that time. Yeah, and we have some good. We're gonna be doing some good oil testing, shooting yeah. some oils. <laughs> <laughs> At the winery. It's like, okay, let's do some, shoot some oil. Okay. Perfect. That's great. <laughs> let's see. Um, all right. And Susan McGill asks about one of your favorite products, Xenogene. Xenogene along with Balance Oil for better cell integrity. And unfortunately, our dear friends in Canada don't get Xenogene yet. Mm -hmm. But um, do you want to talk just a little bit about uh, the Xenogene product? Well, it's another aspect of, of the anti-aging part of Zenzino. Um, you know, Natalie and I were uh, asked to join the science advisory board for Zenzino in part because of our expertise in anti-aging. So we look forward to bringing that more to the front um, in terms of talking about the aging process. And part of the aging process is that we don't eliminate the, 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 the cells that are no longer functioning as they should. Uh, in, in, a, in a normal healthy body, we replace about 300 billion cells a day. That's a lot of cells. Um, and that means that we are all in a constant state of regenerating 
in rebuilding. And what we want to make sure is that the cells that we're creating are healthier than the cells that they're replacing. That means you can build a better body. But there's still a lingering problem and that has to do with what about the cells that are not eliminated as rapidly as they used to be when we were younger? When we were younger, our immune system was constantly looking for cells that are not behaving themselves or cells that are not doing what they're supposed to do. And cells that are beyond their ability to divide are called senescent cells, which means they can't do their, their job. And if they're not eliminated, gobbled up, literally gobbled up by the immune system and, and recycled, right? Then they tend to accumulate. And the accumulation of these senescent cells produces a stress on the body because these cells are not just sitting there. They're producing what? Inflammation. Inflammation. <laughs> so here we are again. So xenogene is an advanced formulation with all of the xenolytic compounds that are found in nature. That xenolytic means they, they help to break down and remove the senescent cells. And so this is a formula that Natalie and I have been looking at uh, for years. And to actually find it you know, when we learned about Zenzino and to see that their xenolytic formula had all the compounds that we've been researching, that was one of the things that really made us you know, jump for joy at finding this company. Curcumin, quercetin, fucoidin from uh, seaweed. Yes. Um, Fisetin. Yeah. Um, yeah, so key ingredients there. All right, so Susan, you were spot on when it comes to cell integrity. Yes, Xenogene steps in and goes, okay, you guys, out of here. <laughs> the rest of you, we're going to make you the best you've ever been. <laughs> well, thank you so much. I, my uh, question related to that, it, I love the great explanation, but I was wondering, I'm getting ready to do my second test in a couple of months. Is it beneficial to do the Xenogene at the same time I'm doing the balance oil to hopefully get those cells, the good nutrients in and the waste out at the same time or do the seasonal spring cleaning every quarter instead? I wasn't sure about the timing of how to, how and when to utilize them. I would love to ask uh, Paul Clayton that question because <laughs> oh. that, that has not come up. Um, and so I'm not going to, uh, wing it here i'm i'm, I'm, yeah. gonna, I'm gonna say let me get back to you and i'll i'll, I'll give paul a, a quick uh email and get back to you and reason oh, thank you it's uh, one of the people on another zoom asked that question so i started going oh my goodness i wonder if that's a thing that i should be doing now to kind of get to that level quicker if that's possible we will confer with paul and colin and get back to you on uh, next week's um, uh, Zoom. It would make sense that the answer is yes, but we'd like to know more about data. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, it's 620. So um, I think I think this is the end of our meeting okay. for today. Well, thank you for spending some time with us again. This is uh, a, a joy to be back in the in the uh, saddle, <laughs> moving moving forward with Zenzino. We're excited about seeing everybody in Reno and Tahoe, and we're excited about um, heading to Houston. Yes, for the first uh, United States Zenzino Convention, uh, September twelfth to the fifteenth. So that's going to be exciting. I hope to see all of you there. Uh, so bye for now. And have a great week. We'll see you again next Wednesday. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Great. Thank you. Thank you.